action, get in action, come with me and let's explore. Get in action, get in action, come with me through the open door. Get in action, get in action, let's get into God's word. Hey, welcome to Kids Connection. Yeah! Today, we're going to talk about worship. Sometimes, when we hear the word worship, we think about singing songs. But worship is more than that. When we sing songs at church, we're singing to or about God. Worship is really all about the one you are singing to or about. Everyone worships something, even if that thing is an idol. An idol is a false god. In our story today, listen for how Paul teaches the people of Athens about the one true God that they should worship. Now, here's our story. Our story is found in Acts chapter 17, verses 16 through 34. We find Paul waiting on his friends to arrive. It says, while Paul was waiting for them in Athens, he was deeply distressed when he saw the city was full of idols. So he reasoned in the synagogue with the Jews and those who worshipped God, as well as in the marketplace every day with those who happened to be there. Some of the Epicurean and Stoic philosophers also debated with him. Some said, what is this ignorant show-off trying to say? Others replied, he seems to be a preacher of foreign deities, because he was telling the good news about Jesus and the resurrection. They took him and brought him to the Areopagus and said, May we learn about this new teaching you are presenting? Because what you say sounds strange to us, and we want to know what these things mean. Now all the Athenians and the foreigners residing there spent their time on nothing else but telling and hearing something new. Paul stood in the middle of the Areopagus and said, People of Athens, I see that you are extremely religious in every respect. For as I was passing through and observing the objects of your worship, I even found an altar on which was inscribed to an unknown God. Therefore, what you worship in ignorance, this I proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it, he is the Lord of heaven and earth. He does not live in a shrine made by hands, neither is he served by human hands, as though he needed anything, since he himself gives everyone life and breath and all things. From one man he has made every nationality to live over the whole earth and has determined their appointed times and boundaries of where they live. He has done this so that they might seek God and perhaps they might reach out and find him, though he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being, as even some of your own poets have said, for we are also his offspring." Since then we are God's offspring, we shouldn't think that the divine nature is like gold or silver or stone, an image fashioned by human art and imagination. Therefore, having overlooked the time of ignorance, God now commands all people everywhere to repent, because he has set a day when he is going to judge the world in righteousness by the man he has appointed. He has provided proof of this to everyone by raising him from the dead. When they heard about the resurrection of the dead, some began to ridicule him, but others said, We'd like to hear from you again about this. So Paul left their presence. However, some people joined him and believed, including Dionysius the Areopagite and a woman named Demarius and others with them. Hey, that was a great story about Paul telling the people of Athens the good news about Jesus. Tony, I have a question. What's an idol? Great question, Goldie. In our story, uh, the idols Paul talks about were false gods. They were statues made out of gold and silver and stone. They thought that the statues they made were gods. It's kind of silly. Yeah, that, that does sound kind of silly. But you know, Goldie, an idol can be anything that takes the place of the one true God. An idol can be anything that we worship or love more than God. Like what? Well, well like I said, anything. You like video games. Sure, who doesn't? Me too. But if I spend all my time playing video games and never read the Bible, I never pray and never go to church, what What do you think I'm worshiping? God or my video games? That makes sense. I can enjoy video games, toys, and other things, but worshiping God should be the most important thing. That's right. Everyone worships something, but only God deserves our true worship.
ready for some jokes? You ready for some jokes? Yes. You don't sound confident. Yes, I am very confident. Okay, here we go. <laughs> here we go. Knock, knock. Who's there? Wah. Wahoo. Whoa, I didn't know you were so excited. <laughs> I don't know what I'm excited about. The jokes. You're excited about the jokes. Okay. Okay, here we go. Knock, knock. Who's there? The little lady. Little old lady who? I didn't know you could yodel. That is, yeah. you can? You can. She is like a yodeler. That's amazing. All right, here we go. She's not like a yodeler. Yet. She's not. Not quite there yet. That's right. <laughs> She's like it, but not there. Oh, okay. uh, last joke. Here we go. <laughs> All right, knock knock. Who's there? I am. I'm who? If you don't know, who does? <laughs> I'm almost the yodeler. Almost the yodeler. That's who I am. That's right. I don't know what to say to that. Bye. <laughs> Bye. That's right. Bye, guys. Bye. <laughs>